So there's this game called Chess. Maybe you've heard of it. I checked on Yahoo and it has quite a few downloads. Um, not as many as Minecraft, obviously, but... Um... <laughs> Sorry, that was such a dumb intro. Anyway, I was doing some thinking a while ago, and I had the idea that it would be pretty cool to make a program that could play against you in chess. And preferably, you know, actually play well. So I began my journey. I started writing some Python code, and I set up this checkerboard. Did I say checkerboard? I mean chessboard. Believe it or not, this was the step in the project that took the most time to finish. Here's why. If you want to make a program like this, the first thing you should do is get yourself a chess engine. Basically, a chess engine is a program that will handle making moves and taking pieces for you. I was originally going to write this in JavaScript, but then I decided Python would be better because I found a library with a ready-made chess engine I could use. This is what a rational person would do. But then I couldn't really figure out how to use that library, so I switched to Java, which was a decent option because I need a lot of speed. Then, for literally no reason, I switched back to Python. And I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna make a chess algorithm, then I'm gonna do this right. So I decided to build my own custom chess engine. This turned out to be a terrible idea. I chose to use something called Pygame to help display the board. And first, here's a little known secret. 95% of the time that a novice programmer complains that something is terrible to use, it's because they don't know what they're doing. Anyway, Pygame is terrible to use. I realized afterwards that basically every problem I had with it was due to my inexperienced programming, and I could make an entire video about the problems I had with it, but just know that I was not having a good time, and that's why it took me a million years to get this board to display properly. Anyway, after making the board, I downloaded a couple dozen images from Wikipedia to use. Then I figured out Pygame doesn't support that file format, so I deleted those and re-downloaded some new ones. Then I did some, uh, programming, you know? I made a piece class that all of the pieces inherit behavior from, and I added in support for mouse input so the player can actually select which moves to make. The game might have been a little strange otherwise. Then it was time to code in all of the little rules that each piece has to follow. It's pretty simple. You have the pawn that can move forward one space unless it hasn't moved yet, in that case two spaces, or diagonally if it can attack, and then you have the horsey which can kind of jump around, and then the fancy pawn that can go diagonally but can't jump over pieces. Get it? Yeah, me neither. So I got all that put in, and I allowed the pieces to move around. Are these legal moves? You think I know how to play chess? What am I, some kind of nerd? <laughs> but anyway, I fixed that, and now the AI can play a masterful game of chess. Uh, just kidding, it's just making random moves right now, so we need to program the AI. Oh, by the way, this engine doesn't support castling, on passant, or checkmate. None of those fake moves. And since there's no way to win, I guess the goal of the game is to, like, have fun, I guess? Kind of weird, I know. At this point, the code for the engine was pretty much done. Not all of it was pretty, and there were some areas of it where I had to mentally prepare myself before I looked at the code. But finally, it was time to start the actual algorithm. You know, the reason I was actually doing this in the first place? One of the fastest ways to get a chess algorithm set up is using something called Minimax with alpha beta pruning. I won't get into the details here, but if you're interested you can watch my video on the tic-tac-toe algorithm I made, which goes a lot more into depth in the process of how you'd make something like this. Here's the basic idea. To decide what move to make, the computer looks at every possible move it can make and figures out which is the best one. But it doesn't just stop there, it also checks every move the opponent can make in response to those moves, and every move the computer can make in response to that, and so on, trying to find the best move to make. The problem here is that there are a lot of possible games in chess. Like, more than there are atoms in the universe, a lot. So you have to limit it somehow, you can't just search all of them. In my case, it only checks about three moves into the future, which isn't amazing, but it's a start. When it checks the moves it can make, it gives each one a score based on what kinds of pieces were taken. For example, a move where it takes the other player's queen gets a high score, so the program is likely to make that move if it can. Here you can see how its behavior changes based on how many moves ahead it's looking. If it looks zero moves ahead, it will just move any of its pieces. If it looks one move ahead, it will capture the opponent's pieces if possible. With two moves ahead, it won't move a piece to a spot where it can be captured, and it will only let its pieces get captured if it wins out in the end. For example, it would sacrifice a knight to capture a queen, and so on. Each additional move you check will add a new behavior to the AI and make it a better player, but it will also take much more time to find the best move. 
I had so many problems setting up the graphics and the chess engine that the actual AI took significantly less time than any other part of the project. The whole program took a couple weeks to finish, but I think I made the algorithm in a couple hours. I have no idea how that makes any sense. Maybe it's because I'd already made that tic-tac-toe program and they work pretty much exactly the same? I don't know. But it does work okay, and there are a few ways that I can make it better in the future. For example, there are these things called piece square tables that you can add in, and these reward the computer for putting the pieces in more strategic positions. I think the best chess programs use machine learning, um, so that's an option, but that's pretty hard to do. Maybe in the future. So anyway, what did I learn from this? Well, for starters, I learned how important it is to plan out your program before you actually make it. And I also learned that programming graphics for a game is pretty much the worst thing ever. So it was a pretty educational experience overall. One last thing, you guys are probably tired of hearing this, but we've doubled again since the last video, and now we have 7,000 subscribers. And I'm sure this has nothing to do with the fact that everyone's stuck at home and has nothing to do. Is it bad that I'm directly benefiting from a pandemic? Yeah, probably. Anyway, this video is a bit different, but it's a couple months in the making, so I hope you liked it. The next video will be back to my usual content, which is Keeper. Thanks for watching.